Hey guys, this is Moan Pober, and today I want to show you how to sell anything to anyone. I don't care what you're doing for a living, you're a salesperson. You need to know how to sell if you want to sell your ideas, your service, your product, whatever. You want to sell your next healthy meal to your children. I don't care what you do, you need to know how to sell. So in today's video, I'm going to show you what to do, how to do, and basically, uh, let me ask you this. What if you had a formula you can follow step by step in order to have a consistent, proven um, process to sell to anyone. So yeah, if you want to check it out, enjoy. You don't need to opt in or anything like that. Just enjoy the rest of your video. I'll share with you my experience as someone who's in the business space for many, many years, who bought businesses and basically is doing this for a living. I need to sell myself, sell my businesses, sell my services. Um, yeah, enjoy. Hey guys, so yeah, let's get to it. So like I said, this video is about how to sell anything to anyone. I'm going to show you a proven formula you can follow anytime, whenever you need to sell anything. And yeah, it's just a matter of implementing it, practicing it, and doing it. And in a matter of business, it's all about turning someone who is trendier into a paying client. This is what sales is about. I don't believe that you are born as a salesperson. I believe that this is something that you can learn. This is not something that you need to have some kind of a, a magical talent or a, be a, have a God-given talent or something like that. I believe everyone can learn it, like pretty much anything out there in life. I mean, yes. You need, I mean, it's not like playing basketball, yes? It's not like you don't need to be like LeBron James and have that crazy talent and then born up like whatever, right? You need to have a basic understanding of the process of sale and then it's just a matter of practice, practicing it. And I mean, if you'll do that, you'll be good. I want to make this sales training, and this is free, more better than any other sales training you ever had, even courses that you paid for. I want to make this free training better than all of them. Why? Because I believe that if you're a good salesperson, if you know how to sell, you'll never go hungry. You, you, you won't be hungry anymore. You need to know how to sell and then you'll be able to dominate everything. You can start a business, you can sell your product. It all comes down to sales. There's another video that I created on how to generate leads and prospects, which is very important because you need prospects in order to sell them. But knowing how to sell is crucial. You can literally cold call people, you can meet people on the street. And if you know how to sell them, you'll never be hungry. And that's why I want to make this training the best out there. And in the end of the day, sales is mandatory, guys. I mean, I don't care what product you have, even if you have the best product out there. If you don't know how to sell it, if you don't have a system to sell it, you won't be successful. Like, what's the best hamburger in the world? It's not McDonald's, but at the same time, they're selling the most. Why? Because they have the right systems. It's not, obviously here we're talking more about selling in front of uh, a face-to-face -face meeting or just on the call, but you just, the, the McDonald's example is just to show you that, hey, the best product isn't the product that's winning. It's about the marketing, it's about selling the product, and if you know how to sell, you'll be good. And not only that, it just it's literally the most important skill you can have. I mean, if you want a business, if you don't have sales, you don't have money coming in. And as someone who's in the space of investing and buying the businesses, and yeah, if you, if you want to hear more about that, obviously subscribe, like this video, let me know in the comments what you think. But all the businesses that we're looking into, guys, you can't have a successful business unless you know how to sell your product. Because if you don't sell your product, you don't have cash coming in. If you don't have cash, eventually you don't have a business. I don't care how good of a product you have, how good of an employees, customer support, or good system that you have. If you don't have sales and you don't have a revenue, you don't have a business. That's why it's so, so important to master that skill, no matter what business you have, or to be honest, no matter what you're doing in life. You need to sell yourself, you need to sell your ideas, your your thoughts, your beliefs. Even if you have a job, if you have a full-time job, you need to, to know how to sell yourself into your boss, to your boss, to sell your thoughts, your ideas, to sell maybe a promotion of yours. So it's crucial, probably the most important skill you can have in whatever you're doing with your life. And like I said, everyone needs to know how to sell. Like from my point of view as an investor, I'm going to talk to businesses. I need to sell myself, sell the fact that I'll be the, the buyer of that business, sell the idea of what I'll do with the business after I buy it, how I'm going to take care of the employees, the heritage, the brand, how I'm going to make sure the seller, the, the owner of that business is going to get the most out of this, this acquisition. And even as an investor, you need to sell yourself. As the business owner, obviously you need to sell yourself, either sell your ideas and vision to employees or sell your product. And even, like I said, whatever you're doing with your life, even if you're just someone who is social, you need to sell to know how to sell yourself in order to move forward with your life and, and just achieve things. Even if you have a family, kids, you need to know how to sell yourself in a way that isn't needy and salesy. 
in order for you to get to a point where you're achieving what you want to achieve and that's obviously just in a good way it's not about you manipulating or or doing things that are bad it's about you selling yourself because you have scenarios and win-win situations that you want to to show others now i believe that sales can basically it's basically two parts there's the inner side of sales that what you think what you believe what your thoughts are before you're selling and there's obviously the the outside of what you actually say when you talk to someone and trying to sell him so we'll talk about the inner sides of, of sales and the outer sides what you actually do and, and the actions that you're taking um, like and, and, and let's start with the inner side obviously I think that I saw people who are socially awkward who become the sell the best salespeople out there because some of the things that I'll show you right now so again it's really important for you to understand talent doesn't matter here it's all about your beliefs and your actions and I'm gonna walk you through what I believe are some of the most important beliefs you should have in that space and then eventually what are some of the steps you gotta take in every sales conversations or calls and it all starts it all starts with a commitment you first of all need to commit to become good at this to make this your skill set and to commit to mastery and it's like anything in life if you want to get good at something you need to commit you need to sell yourself hey I'm deciding this is what I'm going to do this is what I'm going to be good at and I'm going to commit to practice and to mastery and when someone is committing to mastery it means that he understands there's going to be ups and downs and he's just expecting those downs and see them as part of the process as part of the learning experience because after every down there's the dip and then you can go up again get the learning experience and go and, and get to even higher peaks and then go have your downs again but as long as you're committing to the mastery to the process then you're good you just need to decide with yourself and commit do that right now with yourself I'm committing with myself to practice this skill of sales and if you do that that's just just start with that that alone will change your life and if you're telling if you're telling yourself hey I don't have experience I don't have talent I don't have anything like that just I want you to ask yourself how many sales calls or meetings or conversations you had so far in life and if you're not good most likely you didn't have many of those calls or meetings because it all comes down to practice and if you have that habit and consistency of doing sales calls doing meetings doing whatever you can to practice that habit maybe even have just role plays with people that you know on doing sales if you're not good at sales it's probably because you didn't do enough of those the next really important thing you need to do is make the commitment to research that space again like anything in life you want to get to a point where you learn that practice yes you can practice all day long but if you practice their wrong things you can miss a lot and your learning curve is going to be much higher than someone who's also taking action but is learning watching videos like this reading books going to seminars having a mentor potentially who's already achieving the results that you want so other than committing to being a good salesperson and committing to the practice you also need to be committed to just doing research on that space so just make sure hey i'm going to commit to that area i'm going to read at least three books over the next few weeks or few months on that space and I'm gonna make sure that I, I either have lots of phone calls to practice that 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 skill and if I don't have anyone to I, I guess try to sell to yet who can I role play with who can I just talk to and assume as if I'm selling to him something and learn from that now I think a big thing with sales is the non neediness and just the non attachment to get a yes when you're going into a sales conversation, if you don't afraid to lose that sale, then that non-neediness, that non-attachment is huge because you are telling to a person basically, hey, look, I'm here to offer you a service or a product that I believe can add value to your life and I'll do whatever I can to sell it to you. I'll hammer you with all the value and benefits and everything that this product can give to you. But hey, if you're not giving me a yes back, I'm, I'm all good, I know that I did my best and it's all good i can continue with my life and my non-attachment comes from a point that's saying hey i did my best and if the other side can see that can see that benefit of the product that i'm giving to him it's all good like i know i did my best he's losing more than i'm winning here so it's all good i mean i did my best i'm not attached to get the yes and then when you're coming from that mindset of saying hey i already get enough sales i'm all good i don't need your specific sales i'm here to just give you value then 
when you have that vibe with you, that, that attitude, you'll see you'll get many more sales. Another really important thing when you're selling someone and your mindset and your inner side is to make it a win-win. I think that if in your mind you think, hey, I'm here to actually offer value to someone, it's not like me just trying to get money, but I really, really believe that my service and value is gonna add so much value to that other side, then, I mean, you're coming from the right place. And as soon as you, as long as you're coming from that right place, you'll get many more sales. And you can check it with yourself if you're willing and okay with selling your service or product to your best friends and family. If you're okay, then it's all good. But if you have that, I guess, feeling of you're afraid to sell to your friends or family, your value, your service, your product, it means that there's something inside you to still work on. It means that either you don't feel like you're adding enough value, which then you need to either go back and figure out, hey, what can I do to add more value to my friends and family in that service that I'm providing, in that product that I'm having? Or maybe I need to change my perspective, like what's going on in my mind that I think that this product is invaluable. Maybe I need to see things differently in order to understand that, hey, it's a good product that even my best friend and family are gonna get value from it. And if you feel like, hey, I'm not here, I'm not giving enough value, then you won't want to sell that to your best friends and family. And in my opinion, you don't need to try to sell it even to anyone else. If you don't feel that your product and service is adding enough value, don't sell it to anyone. And, and just to give you an example on that, like in my space, when we were buying and investing in businesses, I have lots of partners around the world who are out there looking for deals for me, for my team, and then we're giving them equity in those deals. Now, many times those partners tell me, hey, Moran, I'm, I'm afraid to go out there and talk to potential people who can I know can bring me deal flow and potential businesses for us to buy. And I just, I, I feel like I'm wasting their time. I feel like it's, it's, it's not gonna be fair on their end. Now, in that case, you just need to figure out, hey, what's, what's wrong here? Do we, is it us that are not adding enough value, which is not the case in this place because we're just there to buy their business, to invest in their business. This is the biggest value someone can get. And what they feel is, hey, I'm there, I'm not adding value. And in their case, we just need to change their perspective because what I tell my partners is, hey, look, some of those people, we can pay them five to $10,000 of just referring deals to us. So basically we are willing to pay five to 10 grand for everyone who's sending us deals that we will buy eventually. And if they don't want the money, we can offer them equity in the business in a million dollar plus business all the time. So if you don't see the value in that, you just need to change your perspective and tell them, hey, look, I mean, they're gonna get five to 10 grand just for sending us contacts that we will do and we will do the rest of the work. So it's just a matter of changing your perspective saying, hey, look, man, those guys, are doing nothing. Some of them are accountants and lawyers that are getting paid very small hourly fee. And what we're offering them, we tell them, hey, uh, Mr. Accountant, I'll pay you five to 10 grand for every business that you send to me without doing anything else. So for them, that's a huge opportunity and you need to understand the other side. You're not wasting your time. You're actually giving them an opportunity to be open to your services and businesses investment. So. In that case, it's just a matter of changing your perspective about how you look at those deal flow and opportunities versus if you don't have a good enough product or value, you need to ask yourself, where is the value that I can add to the product? Like I said, in our case, when we're looking to buy businesses and invest money into businesses, I mean, there's no better value, in my opinion, to, to just tell to business owner, hey, look, I'll bring you money to grow that business and potentially our contacts, our experience and whatever else needed to grow you. And then um, after you have all that base, you need to understand, do you have passion for the product? So many times you don't want to sell your product just because you personally are not passionate about it. You maybe feel that, hey, I don't think this product is cool enough or valuable enough. And in that case, maybe you need to find a product that can add a lot of value to you first, that then you're going to feel very happy and passionate and excited to sell that. Because when you're going to talk to someone, they can feel that passion, they can feel that excitement. And excitement and passion is not about high energy and being loud and funny and all that. It's more about an inner fire that you have that you know, hey, this product can really change your life. This service can really help you. And that's where I think value and passion come from. It's understanding that your why of you wanting to sell that product is coming from the right place and the other side can sense that and can feel that. 
And, and just to finish the inner, inner side of things, I think you always want to get to a point where you feel like you're giving people 10 times value, like to do it like 10 versus one for the amount of value you're getting, the amount of money you're getting paid versus the amount of value you give. So you always like to get to a point where you feel or know that you give 10 times the value versus you're getting just one in terms of cash for that product or service. Okay, so now we're done with the inner side of things. Let's talk about the other side of sales. Um, and in my opinion, it comes down to you mostly listening. I believe that the best salespeople out there listen 80% of the time and talk only 20%. But in those 20%, they lead the conversations with the right questions. Because if you're talking nonstop, you're just hammering them, you don't give them enough time to think to the other side. Instead, I think that asking the right questions will lead the prospect or whoever you try to talk to and sell to get to those answers on his own. And when a person is selling himself into the idea of your product or your service, that's where you can sell easily versus you trying to hammer them with manipulations and stuff like that. So I'd say the first thing is make sure you're listening 80% of the time and only talking 20% of the time. And just for the other side of things, I think I'm assuming when, when we're talking to someone, I think the screening process before you're even talking to someone is as important as the actual sales call because many times if you don't have the right, I guess, uh, events that are coming in before the sales calls, you're missing a lot. So when I'm talking about the next steps, I'm assuming that you screened your prospect first, you walked him into some kind of a funnel where he said, he raised his finger and said, hey, I want to be part of this conversation. And he qualified himself to you saying, hey, I want to be part of those conversations. Here is why I think I can be a good prospect to your service and product. And when you're coming from that position, when you have a service to sell or a product to sell and people come to you and qualify themselves on why they should work with you, and that can be done in a very simple marketing and advertising way. You're just saying, hey, I got this product opportunity. I'm willing to take a few phone calls. Here are the benefits. Here's why you should talk to me. And in, before you talk to me, please answer those few questions. And that's where you qualify them. When you have that funnel, you only talk to serious people. You're not wasting time on someone who's just looking to waste your time. And if you have that funnel going in, then when you're coming into conversations, you just have the authority already and the sales process is much easier. It's like when someone, it's like the doctor frame, when someone's going to a doctor, he's not going to a doctor and telling him, okay, doctor, um, yeah, tell me first, why, why should I even listen to you, right? You'll never hear someone say to a doctor because he's already got that frame of a doctor. Hey, I'm here to basically diagnose you and see who you are and let me figure out if I even if what are your what happening to you and how I can help you and that's the same frame you want to have when you're trying to sell a product or a service you want someone to come to you and already understand that you're the authority you're the person in charge and you're deciding if and how much you want to give back as the someone with that service and the reason I'm, I'm emphasizing that funnel and that authority is because I, I just believe less in cold calls I think cold calls is more about calling and and maybe trying to hammer in a service or, or a product. And, and it's, it's more manipulation than giving someone the opportunity to come to you uh, by their choice. So I really, really um, emphasize and I wanna uh, show you how important that funnel is because then when they talk to you, the sales process is, is so easy. So now let's assume we've done that. We have that funnel, people qualify themselves before they talk to us. Now we're in the call, now we're in the meeting. What's next? And the first step in every conversation, obviously after you build initial report, ask what's, how's it going, where are you from, etc., etc. Then you want to figure out, first of all, what's the motivation for him to talk to you? So again, you want to qualify for him to qualify himself to you again. And then just figure out what is current situation. Just, just, it's, very, it's very normal. You just want to understand, hey, like the doctor, tell me what's up with you, what's going on? Are you, do you sick, are you sick, what's going on? What's going on with your business? how many leads you're getting, how many sales you're getting. Like literally just ask as many questions as you can to understand his current situation. Obviously it all depends on what you're trying to sell him, then make it really focused on, on that area. So if you wanna sell some kind of a health service, then obviously ask about his current situation, what your diets looks like, what your daily habits are looking out, 
like how many times you're going to the gym or working out or what kind of food you're eating, how many calories, etc., etc. Just learn as much as you can about that current situation of that person. After you understand what his current situation is, your next step is to figure out where he wants to be. So just ask him, hey, if we were having this conversation a year from today, what would be the ideal next year for you in that specific sector that we're talking about, either business, health, whatever, right? So learn basically what, are, what is his vision, where he want to be, what are his goals, and try to figure out exactly how his life is going to look like when he achieves these goals. And try for him to talk as much as possible about that. Tell him, hey, how your day-to-day is going to look like when you see yourself healthy and in shape. And what do you think? Just show me exactly, or in business, what would be the ideal business for you? How much revenue will you make? How your day-to-day lifestyle is going to look like? Are you going to travel or are you going to have an office? Like literally walk me through step by step what would an, I- what would an ideal situation look like? Now, after you get that, you get where he's at, where he's at right now and you get where, he's want, where he want to be, your goal is to show him that you're the vehicle to walk him through that step by step. That's the main thing in doing sales. You got to make clear that there's a gap to fulfill and you want to be that person, that service that can fulfill that gap. That's a real salesmanship. When you can do, when you can show a person that, hey, you have your life right now, but hey, look at where your life, where they can be and I'm the person who can fulfill your gap, that's where you can make the most out of it. So if you can, and how you do that is basically ask as many questions as you can in this area and as many questions as you can in that area, in the vision side of things. So learn as much as you can about this side of things, about this current situation, show him that there's basically a better life in the other side and that you're the vehicle that can get him there. So what you're doing as a salesperson is basically you selling the better version you're selling him the results that he wants to get. You're not selling him anything else. You're selling him the benefits and results that he can get from getting to that ideal scenario. And if you'll understand that, that's good. Now, I think that the question part, I'm really emphasizing that because now the question side of things, I'm really focused on that because there is a sentence that's saying the person who's asking the right questions also have the right answers for those questions. Especially in the business world, if you know what questions to ask, you can position yourself as the authority if you have the right questions to ask the business owner. Like when you're asking the right questions, people will immediately see you, hey, he's the expert. Like just asking questions like, hey, what's your cost of leads in the last month? What your margins are like? What's your cost of acquisition, uh, acquiring a client look like in the last week? When you're asking those specific type of questions, the person in the other side immediately see you as the authority of someone who's if he knows to ask those specific questions he means he knows it means he knows the answers for those things that's why i trust him in moving forward with his services or products because in the end of the day especially and i'm talking really about business because that's that's my space when you're asking someone a specific questions and they don't feel at ease with answering those question just because they don't know the answers they're on their own they're saying hey if he's asking me asking me those questions i guess he's knowing something that i don't and again that's those kind of things positioning you as the authority now how you fulfill the gap between where they are right now and where they want to be and the biggest thing is just again to ask the right questions and one of the main questions you can ask to to show them that hey you're that gap is asking them hey you're at x right now you want to be at y what's stopping you from going there or achieving that on your own right now like that question alone can worth the entire video that you're watching here and the entire any sales course that you ever had because when you ask that question you're basically showing them hey you want you are here you want to be there why you didn't achieve it on your own yet and that's where they understand hey i need help i need someone to help me and you're the person that basically diagnosed all my situation so i assume that you know how to answer that as well and how to fulfill those questions and after you do that just make sure they're motivated ask for their motivation ask for their commitment ask are you okay you want this but how committed are you how motivated are you so yeah after you offer after you ask for the commitment or motivation offer your service and show them hey my service is the one who can basically fill that gap and remember the more you show them that this is where you are, this is where you want to be, and there's a gap. The more you show them the difference and the fact that you're the person who's the authority because of the questions you ask and you're the person who can fulfill your gap, 
just make your offer show them what you can sell and just shut up let them think about it for a second don't say anything tell them hey here's what i can do here's the price here's how it works here's the result you can get from it just shut up let them talk and you'll see you'll get a lot of yes you might get some no's and many of those no's will come just from the fact that you didn't screen people well before they talk to you which is crucial and remember those who say to you no i mean yes we can talk about objection handling and all that but in my opinion there's so many people out there and as long as you're coming from the right attitude the right perspective and mindset and you're coming from a win-win point of view then it's all good as long as you did your part and you gave everything basically you told them hey here's everything i have here's everything i think that can provide you to fulfill that gap then it's all good just move to the next one there's enough people out there and if you offer value you can feel good that you did everything that you can and if you have the right inner side of things that you really have the belief in that product you really have that win-win attitude you'll still you'll get so much sales you won't get hungry anymore i mean if you can master this skill set and you're really going to practice it in many sales calls many sales meetings you'll be there you'll get there and um, yes you'll, you'll achieve whatever you want and sell whatever you want so i hope you like this video subscribe comment and, and like this video let me know in the comments what do you think and i'll see you soon